Before we get started on this video, there are two tips I want to share with you. Anytime you're working on a transmission, number one, have some good night trial gloves. And number two, always have orange juice handy. Now you're going to ask, well, why do you need orange juice? I'm not going to tell you. If you've ever pulled a transmission and resealed it, you're going to understand why you need some orange juice. I just removed this transmission out of my 300 SDL. If you remember in a previous video, I was chasing a transmission leak and finally discovered that it was coming out of the front seal. So finally it's time to pull out the transmission. So yesterday I got the car up in the air using the transmission stand and we worked this thing out. One thing I want to recommend to any of you considering uh, pulling your own transmission is you need to have the right tools and you need to have the right information. I have written a manual on how to remove a transmission from a Mercedes-Benz and it is available on my website. One tip I want to share with you because I've received a couple emails from people who've had problems. Do not try to remove the transmission and leave the torque converter on the flywheel. If you try to do that, you can damage the teeth inside the pump. The transmission and the torque converter should be removed together. If you loosen up the bolts on the torque converter flex plate and the torque converter will still not move, it means it's stuck to the end of the crankshaft. You'll have to get in there and pry it and work it loose so that will allow you, as you can see in this picture here, that I just drop the whole transmission down with the torque converter together. Now that it's on the bench, I get a good chance to check out things other than just the leak. So I'm going to show you some of the things I found on this particular transmission. I knew the leak was coming out of the front of the transmission, but I had to find out just exactly where. So I went ahead and pulled the torque converter off and I cleaned this area in the front here last night. And I come back this morning and sure enough, if you look right here at the seal, it's fairly dry. But if you look right down here at the pump cover, I see new wetness. So that means in this particular transmission, the primary leak is not through the torque converter seal, but it's through the pump housing. One of the other indications of this is if your transmission leaks a lot of fluid just sitting. If it leaks a lot of fluid after you drive it and then stops, it's usually a problem with this torque converter seal. But if it's leaking fluid all the time, just sitting in the garage, that's usually a good indication that the leak is coming out of this pump cover. What seals this front cover is a large O-ring that you see here. You can see where the O-ring sits right out on the edge of this pump housing. The problem with this O-ring is it does age and harden. And it will actually get so hard that no longer seals and fluid, transmission fluid, can just leak right by the seal. To replace this seal is a little complicated. You can't just pull this off and put a new O-ring on. You have to take all these bolts out here, pull the whole front section of the transmission out, then you have to get in behind and remove the bolts from the inside to get to this part. I have, uh, currently have kits available to do this on the older transmissions, uh, most of the diesels 1984 and older, but I don't on this one. Hopefully I will uh, once I complete this repair. The kit will also include a large paper gasket that you'll need for that housing and of course I always anytime I pull a transmission I always replace the torque converter seal with a new one. There are some other places you want to check for leaks while the transmission is on the bench. Uh, you know we already talked about the pan gasket in a, in a previous video but uh, it is possible that these piston covers can also leak. Uh, they are sealed with o-rings and you'll see wetness right at the base here if there's a problem. You can also experience a leak on the back side coming out of the shift shaft. And you'll always want to take a look at the, the rear seal. I found that the rear seals don't leak as badly as the front. And oftentimes I won't replace these because you can replace the rear seal with the transmission of the car. But look at here, you can see the wetness right in this area. And when I started looking closely at the seal, I grabbed a hold of this output shaft and I go, Look at that, I've got some movement here. This thing is loose. Now that's a problem. You can actually wear out the spline on the output shaft if this loosens up and is rattling like this. So we're gonna have to 
to take that nut off and check the spline and retighten this, so I'm going to go ahead and plan to replace this rear seal at this time. The other thing you want to check while your transmission out is your driveline assembly. Uh, look closely at the flex disc. This is a great time to replace these. This one is starting to show age cracking here. So I've gone ahead and ordered uh, two new flex discs for this drive shaft. You can see a little bulging right there too that shows that it started, the rubber started to deteriorate. Uh, I'm going to lower the drive line and check the center bearing carrier and the center bearing in universal. I've covered that in a, in a previous video. So now I've got my work cut out for me. I'll uh, probably be drinking a gallon of orange juice tomorrow as I tear this transmission apart and replace the seals that I mentioned earlier. If you would like to find out more information about front seal replacement, uh, be sure and visit my website and you can just type in uh, front seal kit, the transmission uh, reseal kit in the search box and it'll take you right to our, our kits.